All right, I got my new shifter all set up on my Next Level Racing GT Elite chair. And I actually like the height of it, how it sits here on the right side. Uh, you can actually raise it or lower it, depending on your pre preference. We have a couple screws here you can very easily take out and you can raise this handle way up here. Same thing goes for the Moza handbrake as well, which we will not be using for this part of the video, but we will use it for later. Here is the, we're getting the force uh, neutral switch, which uh, in iRacing that I'm in now, uh, it does detect it. I can use it for something else. It does not have a function to do the whole, you know, direct to, to neutral idea. I haven't found it yet, at least. Uh, we have it set for shifting up, going backwards, and shifting down, going that way. Very, very, very easy to set up. Let's go ahead and hop into practice here on iRacing in the NASCAR Chevy Camaro ZL1 next gen car here at Watkins Glen. Let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, she's cranked up. There we go. We'll put it into first, come off the clutch. Very nice. Here we go, rolling off a of pit lane. Crew Chief says that the pit exit is clear. Hopefully it stays that way. So here we go. So yeah, I really want to use, I was really looking forward to driving the NASCAR uh, car, stock car, with the sequential shifter. Because again, this is one of the cars that does use a shifter similar to this. So here we go, into fourth gear. We'll, oh yeah, it feels so satisfying, that click, I gotta say. That click is really, really satisfying. I'm gonna break early. I've hadn't had any practice here. Down to third, through the bus stop chicane, right the curb, down to second. Got a car off the track there. Yeah, I'm struggling right now. Do, do not judge me, I have had zero practice. Uh, just wanted to test this shifter out. You know, I could have gone to like, you know, the over track like Daytona or something like that, but I really want to show both shifting up and shifting down. So there we go again. So I'll say one thing, it is very loud. It's much louder than the actual Paddle shifter is on my wheel. So we go into the next turn, completely blew the corner. That's what you get for not having any practice. <laughs> oh, into the sand trap, there we go. All right, well, okay, down a second, watch out for traffic, watch the rejoin. All right, oh, hold on, watch out, my friend, Mr. Sendrick. And back into the front straightaway. There we go, yeah, so I gotta say, I, I love it, I really do. Uh, before this, I've always used the A shifter, which was, you know, which was good too, but Come on, come on. Oh my God, I'm missing all the turns. <laughs> Where I have no brakes. No brakes. <laughs> Point is, I like it. It's loud. I love the feedback on the shifting. Let's go rally racing. <laughs> I, got, I need to practice in this thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rally Sweden. We are in the WRC Cup here at the start and start finish line. We get to use our handbrake this time, so we'll hit the clutch. I'll hold my handbrake down. We'll rev it up, and we'll wait for the lights to go out Five, here. Four, three, two, one, go. And release. Oh, kind of slotted it there. Here we go. And the third, fourth. And you can see just how much more aggressive the drifting is here in rally racing. And I'm going to tell you what, this is the... The most popular use for the SGP sequential shifter by Moza, and that is rally racing. You mostly see uh, sequential gearboxes like this in rally cars. It's super helpful. It's very different. I've been racing rally again, as I said in NASCAR. Ooh, watch out with the uh, H shifter, which is fine too. Um, it's a bit more tricky trying to find the gear. Ooh, I'm holding on, guys. I'm trying to talk and drive at the same time. This is not easy. Come on, hold on, sir. Can I talk and drive at the same time? This is probably not a good idea. So, I'm in no way the GOAT at this. I'm, <laughs> I'm just a typical sim racer who loves driving, loves racing. Um, you're not going to find me having the highest safety No, have a good safety rating, but not having the highest I rating, you know what I'm saying? I'm never in a top split. I'm usually in the middle somewhere. But uh, I love driving, love racing. And I got to say, I'm loving this sequential shifter on WRC. Again, loving the, I mean, it's kind of loud. Like I said, I mean, if you have a lot of family in the house, you're trying to drive late at night, that's one issue I've personally had with it so far. If, you know, if um, the people in my house are asleep, <laughs> you know, the last thing I want to do is be going in here, clicking around, waking everybody up, pissing them off. So that's that's one issue, I'll say. Um, I have the exact same problem. Oh, here we go. Hamper. Oh, hold on to it. Oh, stalled it. I <laughs> stalled it. And stalled it again. Come on, hold on, come on, let's go. There we go. 
But it's very nice. It feels great. I love the feedback though. Even though it's loud, um, I do love the feedback. So I mean, would I want to be quieter? Uh, it'd be nice if it was quieter, but I don't want to lose that clicky feedback you get. It really makes you feel like you're just ki you're kicking in the gear without having something like a butt kick or actual force feedback. You just get that actual physical feedback. Hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Oh, we're on the oh, we're on the, on the edge, and we lost it again. <laughs> we're back at it. We're back at it. But yeah, so I mean, if I wasn't talking, I think I'd be doing better. That's my excuse. That's my excuse. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think most people watching this video just kind of wonder, hey, is it worth it? And to be honest, this is not going to be the first thing you buy, right? Like, you know, you want to make sure you get you a good wheel, a good base, some good pedals. You know, uh, you could definitely do all this with just the um, clickers, with the paddle shifters. But if you're later on down the kind of the line of your setup, you're looking away. To upgrade your setup, you do a lot of rally driving, or you drive a particular discipline of car that uses a sequential shifter, you're definitely gonna love it. Now, another question I get very often is, hey, like, can you use this for other cars? You know, I mean, what if you don't have a shifter at all and you're considering using it for like a truck sim or, uh, you know, F1? I mean, I personally would not use it for F1, but yes, you could. I mean, pretty much every racing game uh, will allow you to use a sequential shifter however you like. It may not really be realistic. <laughs> to run a sequential, sequential shifter on F1, but hey, if you want to do that, that's what you want to do, go for it. Just don't send me any pictures and don't tell anybody because they're definitely going to judge you. But but yeah, you can use it for any racing game you want. And uh, Moses does a good job of making sure everything is indeed. Here we go, handbrake. There we go, we got it. Moses does a good job making sure everything is compatible. But yeah, I like it. Uh, would I recommend it? Absolutely. I think it's definitely worth the price. It's very duty. Uh, we'll say depending on your actual uh, setup, you know, if you have like a, one of the cheaper racing rigs, you may find it. Uh, you know, a, it may it, it may push your rig to its limit as far as durability because when you pull back on this thing, I mean, you're putting a lot of pressure on it, and uh, it's definitely possible that uh, you know whatever you've mounted it on could be not as strong as the actual uh, shifter itself. So keeping that in mind. But I don't find any faults in the build quality or durability of the actual shifter itself. Feels great, handle feels great in your hand, adjustable, and it's just 100% worth it in my opinion. I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a sequential shifter. I'm loving it. I'm going to keep using it myself, specifically for rally for me and NASCAR. Um, but I'll definitely be probably swapping between my H pattern shifter as well from time to time if needed. Oh yeah, we're getting some speed now, baby. Woohoo! Oh yeah, hold on, hold on! Ah. We have a puncture! It's over. It's over. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Another very common use of the sequential shifter. And a popular one I think is going to be drifting, baby. Let's go. Also making use of the handbrake. <laughs> Let's go. Go on, stay with it, stay with it. Swing it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that is so much fun yes i think a very popular use for the shifter is indeed going to be drifting so if you're a drifter or a sim rally driver or even a nascar driver i think this is quintual shifter is definitely uh a must-have item for you for sure if it works for you if it works for your budget if it makes sense to you yeah i mean i love it i am gonna be using it for now on for drifting for a rally and for NASCAR. So as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the shifter. Does a sequential shifter make sense for you in your sim racing setup? Or are you more of an age pattern shifter kind of guy? Or are, is all you need just uh, you know the paddle shifters? Let me know again 
Start the conversation. Until next time, remember, you had three choices. Give up, give in, or give it all. You got peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. We out, baby. <laughs>